Well, hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. And um, as we get started here, let's do a quick tech check and make sure that you can see and hear me. On the right side of the screen here, you should see a little chat bar. Just let me know. Yes, Rachel, I can see you. Yes, Rachel, I can hear you. Um, so that I know that I'm coming through for you loud and clear. And in just a moment here, we'll go ahead and get started on today's topic, which is spousal inclusion in your retirement plan, specifically in your solo 401k. Hello, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Dale, Jim, Dimitri, Richard, Louis, Rachel. Hello, Rachel, fellow Rachel. Good to have you here. So, um, yeah, this is this is a really interesting topic for us to dig into, you guys. And I know I probably sound a little bit like a nerd saying, oh, spousal inclusion in retirement plans. <laughs> what a fascinating topic. But it really is. So what we're going to do is dig in today on why to consider including your spouse in your solo 401k, some of the benefits of having them be a part of your solo 401k. We also want to cover some of the logistics, some things you need to keep in mind if you're going to have somebody else in your retirement plan. And what I did is I created a little poll down here somewhere, probably like right there, and you should be able to see the poll. The question is, does your spouse currently participate in your solo 401k? Yes. No, my money, my plan, get them out of here. Or no, they don't, but I want them to. So take a moment, click on the answer that is most relevant to you. Does your spouse currently participate in your solo 401k plan? Yes, they do. No, they don't. And you're cool with that. Or no, they don't. But you'd like to explore adding them as a participant. And I know we have some um, attendees here who don't yet have a solo 401k with us. Um, that's cool. We look forward to having you as a part of our community. You can add your spouse to your solo 401k with neighbors group at any time. There is no fee or anything for that. It's a very simple update for us on the back end. So if you are one of those people that said, no, I don't have my spouse in the solo 401k, but I want them included, then we'll make sure that that's something that can happen for you. Um, as long as it's, you know, allowed to for your specific situation. So we're going to cover all of the intricacies for that here in just a moment. The votes are rolling in. Looks like 44% of you say yes, your spouse does participate in the solo 401k. And 55 says no, they don't, but I want them to. So that's cool. I'm really glad that you guys are sharing that information um, because it's a really powerful way to grow your money pretty quickly if you can have both of you contributing to and investing in one retirement vehicle together. That's exactly what we're going to dig into. I have a short presentation I've prepared for you guys today. Um, and side note, if you are single, ready to mingle, you don't have a spouse, then check out the Solo 401k network. Um, I'm trying to convince Jeff to let me turn it into a Solo, solo 401k, IRA LLC, self-directed investor, information sharing community plus dating app. He has not gone for that yet, but I'm going to keep working on him. But if you are looking to meet other like-minded individuals, married or not, doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, it does matter, but you know what I mean. If you'd like to connect with other solo 401k investors, IRA LLC investors, self-directed investors that think like you that are independent in their line of thinking, that are perhaps entrepreneurs, small business owners that are forging their own path, then definitely go check out our Solo 401k network. It's free. Um, we've made it available so that we can all hang out together, share ideas, 
and exchange those ideas with one another, network with each other and get to know one another. Um, you know, we put on the Self-Directed Investors Summit each year. Unfortunately, this year we had to cancel the summit because of the pandemic. So we really wanted to have an opportunity for all of us to be able to meet in one place, even virtually, where we can share our ideas and our learnings with one another. Um, you might have found in the past that if you talked about self-directed investing or a solo 401k or the fact that your retirement plan can buy real estate or Bitcoin or gold or whatever, that sometimes people look at you like you have two heads. It's a concept they're not familiar with. So we created that community as a place for everybody to be able to come and hang out. It's at solo401k.net. I'll make sure later on today, you know, in this presentation, I post a link for you guys to that. If you're not already a member there, head on over to solo401k.net so that you can join that community. And let me go ahead and share my screen and we will get right in to the presentation. Okay. One moment here. Okay, awesome. You should be able to see my screen nice and big now. So what we're covering today is spousal inclusion in a solo 401k. And of course, as always, giving you our disclaimer, we're going to cover a lot of information and education today, but none of this is tax, legal, or investment advice. If you have questions about your specific situation on whether or not it's legal or allowable for your spouse to participate in your solo 401k, we're going to give you some guidelines and general best practices, but you know, make sure you get the sign off and the seal of approval from your tax advisor or your attorney. Um, you guys probably know me by now. I'm Rachel Neighbors. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. Your spouse and your solo 401k. So before we begin, um, or really getting into sort of the nuts and bolts of things, I want to define a couple of terms. And if you've recently set up your solo 401k with us, you might have already come to this conclusion of like, man, I'm a lot of people in this solo 401k. And that's true. You're a plan administrator. You're an employer. You're an employee. You are a plan participant. You're a plan trustee. You wear a lot of hats in a solo 401k. And the two terms I want to zero in on are plan participant and plan trustee, because these two different roles make a difference in how you interact with the money in a solo 401k. So um, first, let's look at plan participants, what plan participants are and can do. A plan participant is someone that is employed by the sponsoring company. So as you know, all 401k plans are employer-sponsored plans. They're also known as a qualified retirement plan, a QRP, a 401k, solo 401k, employer-sponsored plan. It's all basically meaning the same thing. In order to have a 401k, which is a company retirement plan, there has to be some sort of company attached to it. This can be a sole proprietorship. Maybe you've just got 1099 income. Maybe you have a full-blown S-corp or a C-corp or anything in between, LLCs, partnerships, et cetera, not-for-profit corporations, professional corporations, et cetera. All of these are on the table. The plan participant is someone that is employed by the company and as such has a benefit of being able to participate in the company retirement plan. A solo 401k plan participant is also allowed to roll over funds from other retirement plans. And for many of you who have been with us forever, you know all of the um, intricacies of this, what you can roll into the solo 401k. A solo 401k plan participant is also able to make contributions to the company retirement plan based on your earnings from the company. So remember, you can't contribute more than you make and how much you make from the company, how much you get paid is directly what calculates how much you can contribute. So all of these are benefits to you as, you know, an employee of the company, you get to participate in this company retirement plan. And then of course, in a solo 401k, we have extra special stuff, right? You have the ability to choose your own investments. Um, you can sign for your investments. 
As a plan participant, you can take distributions. You can take money out of the plan. You can also take a participant loan. And um, speaking of the participant loan, it is September 20 or today is September 2nd. You have 20 days until the CARES Act loan deadline arrives. September 22nd is the last day to take your CARES Act loan. So if you are thinking of doing a participant loan in normal circumstances, you can take out 50% of your plan funds or 50 grand. Until September 2nd, you can take out 100% of your plan funds or 100,000. So while we're here on this topic of participant loans, just a little reminder, you have 20 days to take that CARES Act loan if that's something that you're planning on doing. So plan participants, you're employed by the company, and that means you can put money in the 401k plan. You can put money in the 401k plan in the form of rollovers, contributions. You can also choose what you're investing in, and you can take money out of the plan in the form of distributions and participant loans. If you're a 401k trustee, really what you are is a fiduciary. So your job is to be sort of a responsible steward of the wealth that's in the plan. So a lot of times that will mean that you are signing for investments or if you're opening bank accounts, they're in the name usually of the trustee. And what you might have even found is if you're only a participant and you're not a trustee, some banks won't even let you be a signer on the account. They like to see a trustee as the signer. So these are just sort of some distinctions between these two roles. And it's important to keep these in mind as we move forward because you want to know who you are. You might just be the plan participant, which is totally fine. You might be a plan participant and a trustee. You might be a trustee only. We have some couples who maybe the wife is the owner of the business the husband has no um, nothing to do with the business, doesn't own the business, is not an employee, but wants to have signatory authority, and the wife has agreed to that. So maybe we would list uh, the husband as a co-trustee, even though he's not a participant in the plan. That scenario is less common. What's most common is that both spouses are participants, and one is usually a trustee, or sometimes both are trustees. What I want to get into today is why you want to include your spouse as a participant in the solo 401k. So everything that we're going to cover from here on out is addressing participants. And remember, when you're a participant in the company, or excuse me, when you're a participant in the company retirement plan, you can put money in. So what we're going to go over is some of the benefits on why you should consider putting money into your solo 401k plan as an employee of your company. There's two big things we're going to cover today, um, higher contribution limits and the ability to co-invest with your spouse. And if this image is not adorbs for the pandemic times, I don't know what is. Okay, so the first thing we'll talk about is when you include your spouse as a participant in your solo 401k plan, you can contribute more. And what I want to do is go through an example. So let's say uh, John and Jane, very imaginative names, I know. John and Jane both um, are working in the same company, but John is the only one who's a participant in the solo 401k and he takes a salary of $140,000. That's what's showing up on his W-2. And you can see from the contribution calculation here that that means John can contribute $54,500 to the solo 401k. To dig in a little bit on how I got those numbers, the $19,500 is the employee salary deferral, and $35,000 is the employer profit sharing contribution. So this is an S corp for John and Jane. And I'm assuming that they don't work at another company 401k. We're going to keep this example very simple. They both, um, maybe just John is the only one right now participating in the solo 401k and he's the only one drawing a W2. 
from the company. So the way that we get to that contribution number is, you know, 19,500 can be your employee salary deferral contribution. And then for an S corp, you can look at 25% of your W2 wages to make up the profit sharing contribution. So 25% of 140,000 is $35,000. If we take $35,000 as the employer profit sharing contribution, and we add that to 19,500 as the employee salary deferral contribution, then that gives us $54,500 in total contributions for John from his $140,000 salary to the solo 401k plan. But now let's look at the numbers if you pay yourself 100,000 and you pay your spouse 40,000. So I'm not increasing the amount of payroll. It's 140,000 is what the numbers that we were looking at. First, we looked at what would happen if it was 140,000 to just one spouse. Now we're looking at what happens if we break up those numbers. 100,000 goes to spouse number one, 40,000 goes to spouse number two. Same 140,000 is being paid from the business, but this time we're splitting up payroll between you and your spouse. And I know already I can hear people going, yeah, but there's more payroll taxes in FICA. I know. The, the point of this example is not to see how low uh, is humanly possible to get your taxes down to the like final dollar. The idea with this example is we want to take a look to compare and contrast how much more can you contribute which can be a tax deduction or um, can be Roth funds if you would like to structure them that way and then be able to get that much more money in your retirement account because as self-directed investors, you can choose what you're investing in and hopefully have great returns. So the point of this example, again, is not to reduce taxes as much as ultimately possible. It's to see what those numbers do when we take that same 140000 but we break it up between both spouses and then calculate their contributions. So um, we already know, uh, so, okay, for the first spouse, 100,000. We took that 140, we're giving 100,000 to spouse number one, 40,000 to spouse number two. For $100,000, you can contribute $44,500. This is for spouse number one. That's 19,500 in the employee salary deferral, and 25,000 in the employer profit sharing. Again, the profit sharing is gonna be 25% of the W-2 wages, 25% of 100 grand, 25,000, 25,000 plus 19,500, 44,500 for spouse number one. For spouse number two, based on $40,000 in compensation, you can put 19,500 as the employee salary deferral contribution and 10,000 as the employer profit sharing contribution. So $40,000, 25% of that is 10 grand. 10 grand plus 29,500 is 20 or excuse me plus 19,500 is 29,500 total that spouse number two can make in contributions from their $40,000 in earning. And I know some of you are already going, aha, there's more money that's going in here. You're right. So remember, the original contribution for spouse number one, receiving $140,000 in salary, that spouse was able to contribute $54,500, which is no slouch. That's an amazing amount of money to contribute to a solo 401k plan. It's a very aggressive amount to reduce your taxes and be able to increase your retirement nest egg. But if we take that same 140 grand and we split it up between participant one and participant two, both spouses, right? You can actually contribute $74,000 because you're taking that 44,500, which is based on that $100,000 of salary and 29,500 in contribution for the for spouse based on the $40,000 in salary. So I just wanna land here for a moment and let, you, let these numbers really sink in for you guys. It's the same amount of payroll, but you're able to contribute 20 grand extra, that could make a big difference in even potentially dropping you into a lower tax bracket. So I think this is one of the big reasons to consider having your spouse as a participant in the solo 401k plan with you.
The next thing I want to talk about is the ability to co-invest on a deal together. Because you and your spouse are both plan participants, you may both invest in the same asset. Typically, uh, partnering with your spouse's IRA, if you guys were both IRAs or if you have a 401k and your spouse has an IRA, if you're partnering with your spouse's IRA, this can have some compliance issues and it might be a prohibited transaction. But with a solo 401k, co-investing with your spouse is allowed. And that's because you are each participants of the same solo 401k trust. And in reality, it's the solo 401k trust that's investing. And you as a participant are simply putting funds into the trust through your contributions or your rollovers. And then the trust is the one who's investing. So I have some very fancy animations here for you guys. Um, if we look at this solo 401k trust, we can see that we've got the husband who has a rollover IRA and the wife has a previous employer 401k. Just as you would imagine, the husband's rollover IRA goes into his participant bucket and the wife's previous employer goes into her participant bucket of the solo 401k. Additionally, um, this particular couple have attended this webinar. And so they said, yes, let's both be participants so we can each contribute money to the plan. So that's growing their solo 401k faster. If they're going to co-invest on a deal together, then what that means is each participant can send funds to the closing table or investment sponsor. In this case, it looks like we're buying a house. And then the contract goes to the 401k trust. So you can see the contract doesn't go to any one participant because it's the 401k trust that's actually doing the investing and each participant is putting in money. And now let's imagine a month's gone forward, the little dollars have moved. So now they represent rent dollars. When the rent income comes in, it goes back to each participant based on what he or she has invested. So this brings us to our next point which is record keeping. The easiest way to keep the records if you and your spouse are both participating in the solo 401k is for you each to have separate bank accounts. Now, both of these bank accounts are titled in the name of the trust. We'll have a little diagram or visualization on this in a moment. But what this is gonna do is allow you each to keep track of whose money is whose. All of it is 401k money. It all belongs in the 401k trust for your solo 401k. But this is going to make it much simpler for you to keep track of who rolled in what, who contributed what, who invested what, and then who receives what from their investment returns. Um, remember we talked about in the beginning your roles, plan participant, plan trustee. Typically, only trustees can have signatory authority on bank accounts. So they have signing rights to make investments and move things around. On the other hand, participants can usually have their own brokerage accounts. And we'll look at sort of what this shakes out to in a moment. But the bottom line is we would recommend that you and your spouse each have separate bank and brokerage accounts. It's going to make your record keeping much easier. So if we take a look at a bank account, it might be something like this. Both accounts are titled in the name of the 401k trust, but each of you get to have your own money in a distinct account. So let's uh, remember we talked about John and Jane. Now let's imagine what their accounts will look like. Let's say their solo 401k trust is called the J&J &J Investment Trust. We have John Doe, he's a participant and a trustee. Jane Doe, she's a participant and a trustee. So when they open the bank accounts, they're really just opening two bank accounts for J&J &J Investment Trust. What we recommend that makes things a lot easier for you is to use account nicknames for your online banking. This will make it really easy at a glance to see whose account belongs to who. So as we can see here on the left, J&J &J Investment Trust dash John is going to be John's money. That's the money he rolls in from other retirement accounts that he contributes based on his net business earnings and that he's investing. That's John's account. And the same thing happens with Jane's account so that the record keeping is quite simple. 
if you guys are using pre-tax and Roth funds in your solo 401k, and as you know, your solo 401k automatically includes Roth 401k capabilities. You can use pre-tax, Roth, both one or the other. It's totally up to you. But you might end up having like four bank accounts, and that's okay. You just want to make sure that you're being really clean in your account nickname. So as you can see here, what we've done, J&J &J Investment Trust has literally four bank accounts. But what John and Jane have done is nicknamed their accounts on their online banking so that one says, John and Jane Investment Trust, John Trad, like for John Traditional Funds, pre-tax, J&J &J Investment Trust, John Roth, J&J &J Investment Trust, Jane Trad, and J&J &J Investment Trust, Jane Roth. This way, at a glance, as soon as you are logging into your online banking, you can see which is which. This will also make it much more straightforward when it comes to doing contributions. Um, so when I do contributions, for example, um, I have these same nicknames on my online banking. And when I do contributions, if I'm doing an electronic funds transfer from my personal account or my business account to make a contribution to the solo 401k, it's really obvious just in my own portal for online banking. Okay. This is my Roth account. This is my traditional account. So I know where I'm making my contribution. If you are opening brokerage accounts, then depending on uh, the brokerage firm that they use, that you use, you might have two participant accounts or you might under one trust account, or you might have completely separate logins altogether. Um, for example, I use Schwab and Schwab has something that they call a company retirement account pension master. It's a mouthful. The way that they've created their account, though, is it's a trust master account, and then each participant has participant accounts underneath, where let's say John and Jane, they create a trust master account. They might not keep any money in there, but they can have participant sub accounts, just like you can see here on the screen, and that way they each can put their own money into a participant account. On the other hand, if you're using something like Fidelity or E-Trade, you might open a participant account just for you and your spouse can open a participant account just for them. You do not have to use the same platform. Maybe you love Schwab, your spouse loves TD Ameritrade, totally fine. You have the flexibility to do that. Again, it's just really coming back to keeping those clean records of knowing what's going on. So remember how we talked about in the beginning, you wear a lot of hats in the solo 401k. You're the employee, you're the employer, you're the participant, maybe you're also the trustee, and you're the plan administrator. So the plan administrator is the person who keeps the records of the plan. You are keeping track of who contributed what, who invested what, who rolled over how much. And if you co-invest, you know how much you put into the investment and how much your spouse put into the investment. That way you can distribute earnings or rental income or dividends back to each participant based on what they invested into the deal. And you might create something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet. It might look like this. Um, I know that for some of you, we've been teasing. Uh, we do have a records software that's in development. As soon as we have something in beta for you guys to jump in there and test and poke around, we'll definitely let you know. But in the interim, what you might do is create something like a spreadsheet so that you can keep track of who put in what. And then for contributions, it might look something like this, where you've got a Google spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet, and you're keeping track of the amount that was contributed, the participant who made the contribution, the date of the contribution, the tax year, which account it went into. This gives you a historical record that will match up with your deposits of how you got money into the plan. Okay, so... One more item I want to cover here is solo 401k document considerations. Um, I've had people ask me over the years like, hey, my spouse is a participant. I put them on the application, but they're nowhere in the plan documents. What gives? And the idea behind this is only trustees are listed by name in a 401k plan. 
So uh, if you're looking for your trustee information, it's right in your adoption agreement. You'll see it under number 18 in your adoption agreement. And only trustees are listed by name. Plan participants are not listed by name in the 401k plan. And think about it this way. It would be a really big mess if a big company had to redraw their 401k plan documents every time they hired or fired a new employee. All eligible employees can participate in a company retirement plan. For a solo 401k, those eligible employees are you as the owner or maybe the owner and the spouse. And it's totally normal for only trustees to be listed in the documents. So if your spouse is a participant and not a trustee, it's okay that you do not see their name in the 401k documents. If your spouse is earning income, getting paid from your business, then they can participate in your 401k plan. I am a little bit psychic, so I have anticipated what I think some common scenarios and questions will be, and I wanted to address those for you guys. So the first is, if you have separate businesses, should you have a separate solo 401k? Um, the answer really is it depends here, whether or not you should have separate businesses or, or excuse me, separate solo 401ks for your separate businesses. There are pros and cons to both. Um, if you have a solo 401k and your spouse has a solo 401k, those 401ks cannot co-invest together. So if the goal is for you guys to be able to co-invest on deals, then even if you have separate businesses, what you might consider doing is creating a holding company so that that holding company can have the solo 401k. You guys both contribute to it. And then that solo 401k is still who's doing the investing. If that's you and you, you have a question about that, then, um, you know, let us know and we can, we can try to dig into that a little bit with you. What about another common scenario is you want to keep your funds completely separate from your spouse. You, you have no joint bank accounts. You have no joint assets. You want to keep your funds separate, um, but you work in the same business. Should you have the sa same uh, solo 401k plan or should you have two different solo 401k plans? Ideally, you would have the same solo 401k plans and sa same solo 401k plan and maintaining two separate bank accounts, which you could even do at separate banks, would accomplish this. You're able to invest separately and you can each keep the records of your participant account, what you've contributed, rolled in, invested, distributed, etc. So you can treat them like separate plans. In reality, they are separate sub accounts of one plan. But if you really feel more comfortable keeping your funds completely separate from your spouse, then that is accomplishable by maintaining separate bank accounts and brokerage accounts and maintaining two set sets of records, one for each participant distinct of the other. It is still a good idea to have a master spreadsheet of the total plan value, because remember, if your total plan value goes over 250,000, you'll need to do the 5,500 easy. But for all of your day-to-day -day ongoing records, having your spreadsheet for your funds, your spouse's spreadsheet for their funds, can help you to accomplish keeping your funds separate. Okay, next question. What, or well, it's not really a question, but a common scenario that I anticipated that you would ask. What if your spouse stops working? This should say in your business. If your spouse stops working in your business, what happens? Can they still keep funds in the plan and keep investing? Yes, they can, but they cannot contribute new funds to the plan. So think about it this way. Remember, Solo 401ks are, follow the same rules as regular 401ks. And there's probably some of you out there that have what we call orphan 401ks. It's a 401k at an old job that you're not working at anymore. Obviously, your funds are still in that old 401k, even though you don't work for that business. And they're still investing your money for you. But you can't contribute new money to that plan because you're no longer working in that business. So if your spouse stops working in your business, they may still keep funds in the plan, but they are not eligible to contribute anymore. Um, and 
we would still recommend that if the spouse is no longer working for you at all, that you check with a CPA. Um, they're not really an eligible employee if they're not working there anymore. So the best practice may eventually be to roll the funds out to something like an IRA um, or another retirement account. Okay, this is, a, this is another question. This one gets a little bit heady, so stick with me here. What if your spouse has full-time employees in her business, but you don't in your business? Can you have a solo 401k? Yes, but your spouse can't have any money in your solo 401k, not $1. They also cannot have any control over your business. Your spouse may not be an officer. They cannot be a board member. They can have zero ownership in your business or else the fact that they have a business with full-time W-2 employees kills your eligibility for your own solo 401k. So if you have your own business, no employees, and your spouse has a business and they have full-time W-2 employees, you can still maintain your solo 401k, but your spouse is not in it. They're not in your business. They're not in your 401k. This solo 401k that you're establishing is for you and your funds only, period. It's a little more complex than that because it's something called a controlled group with a spousal exception. If you want to nerd out on it, feel free to jump into our knowledge base because we have some articles about this um, and we're happy to guide you through it. So, okay, those were some common scenarios. I want to open it up to Q&A. What we really wanted to do here today is just um, kind of bring up why it's a good idea to consider including your spouse in your solo 401k plan. And um, really, I think the main two drivers are the uh, higher contribution limits and the ability to co-invest in deals together. And I see that there are some questions here, so let me go ahead and start tackling those. Um, Bill says, what if my wife works full time at another another company and maximizes her salary deferral of 26,000? How much can she contribute to the solo 401k? It depends on how much you're paying her bill. If she's already exhausted her employee salary deferral contributions, then that would mean that she can make employer profit sharing contributions to the solo 401k based on her earnings. So even if she's not listed as an owner, like let's say you have an LLC bill, even if she's not listed as an owner, if she is an employee, she can make those profit sharing contributions based on her compensation. And the structure, remember, is if you have a single member LLC, sole proprietorship, 20%. If you have a multi-member LLC, S Corp, C Corp, 25%. So, Bill, I would recommend go to our contribution calculator. I'll just type it into the chat here. You guys probably know this page by now. Solo401k.com slash calculator. Plug in the numbers there. It's going to assume that she uh, can make contributions as an employee as well. So just make sure you adjust that calculation. The, co the, con the calculator will assume that she can make the employee contribution. So... Just keep that in mind. Okay, next question comes from Rich. Any pros or cons to both spouses being trustees? It depends. Um, we've set up the plan where we don't require both trustees sign for every investment, uh, even real estate. So this is nice because it means that you can go to a real estate closing and just one of you is able to sign for the, for the closing. Um, that's, I'd say definitely a pro. Um, I think the only con is this is sort of a, a personal topic, but it just depends how you run things in your household. Um, if your spouse does not feel comfortable having signatory authority over the assets or doesn't want to maybe be responsible for the funds, then I think, um, not having them as a part or excuse me, not having them as a trustee is, is, is a really good option. They can still put money into the plan, but they don't have to feel the responsibility of being a signer. Some people don't want that. They just want to be able to put money in the plan and um, be a more passive role. 
Um, okay, so we have another few questions here. Let's see. Dimitri says, my wife is not on payroll in my LLC, and I don't want to complicate things by adding her to payroll. Can she be a participant in my company 401k? Well, my official answer, Dimitri, would be to ask your CPA or your tax advisor, but I think it might be challenging to justify that she's an employee if she's not receiving compensation. And for an LLC, depending on how you have the business structured, um, it might not necessarily need to be a W-2 per se, unless you pay yourself via a W-2, in which case you probably do need to give her a W-2. But if you're just showing income on your Schedule C and you can do something similar for your wife, that may accomplish what you're trying to achieve here. So this is definitely a tax question for your CPA. Um, I would strongly recommend that you reach out to them. Let them know what you're trying to accomplish and get their feedback on your particular situation. If you need recommendations to CPAs who are literate with the solo 401k, because not all CPAs are familiar with this concept, then um, we have that CPA recommendation list in the Solo 401k knowledge base, which you can find at support.solo401k.com. You can also get to it from your 401k dashboard and just type in CPA list or CPA recommendations. So it may be possible, Dimitri, um, if you're showing payroll as an employee of your company, your wife will probably need to show payroll to be considered an eligible employee to be able to participate in the company retirement plan, but always ask your CPA. Okay. Glenn, I got tangled up and got in late. Will there be a replay available? Great question, yes. As long as you are registered for the session, then we'll make sure you guys get a replay. I know that this stuff can be kind of heady or maybe your spouse isn't with you right now and you want them to see a replay of the materials later. So yes, as long as you're registered, you've got your spot saved here, then you can get access to the replay. Okay, Stuart says, LLC taxed as an S-corp. Aha, I love this question, Stuart. Thank you. So LLC taxed as an S-corp. Do we both need to pay ourselves with W-2 or do distributions from the S-Corp count towards eligible calculation? The IRS kind of sucks here. No offense if you work for the IRS. They have said that for corporations and S-Corps in particular, all contributions are based on W-2 wages. There's actually literally a page on the IRS website. Um, I'll see if I can get it and post it in the chat so that you guys have it as part of the resources here where they literally answer this question of you cannot use your K-1 distributions or your 1120S distributions um, because they don't count that as part of your um, your compensation. It's an owner distribution. It's taxed differently. In short, they don't make as much money off of you on those distributions. So all S-Corp wages that are reflected on your W-2, that's where you're calculating your contributions from. You are not calculating contributions based on owner distributions, W-2 wages only. Great question, Stuart. Thank you so much for asking that one. Okay, Bill, I think we, we got your question already, so appreciate you bringing that forward. Um, okay, Kyle says, I thought if a married company, I think you mean married couple, I thought if a more married couple both work in, say, a C-Corp, and one spouse has another business that has employees, the one with employees is written out of the plan, and the spouse in the C Corp can have a solo 401k. You made it seem you can't do that. This is a, a, a not that clear of a question, Kyle. If you want to maybe rewrite it, that would be helpful. But to go back to this topic, if you both work in a C Corp and then the um, the one spouse has a business, has another a business that has full-time W-2 employees, then that's that's challenging because that means that the uh, you may be considered part of a controlled group. 
There is a spousal exception where if the spouse has nothing to do with your business, then you may still be able to have that C Corp um, and or have that C Corp have a solo 401k. But um, it can be challenging because it, it, we would need to know what your ownership percentages are of the different corporations to see if it's possible to write an exclusion or if this would be considered a controlled group. And of course, I would always say, talk with your CPA or tax advisor to see if this is an option for you. Controlled groups uh, start to get very complicated very quickly. So you always want to have your tax advisor or CPA looking over your shoulder and giving you their blessing before you proceed. Okay, Irene says, we have an S Corp with 17 employees. I'm a majority owner. We wanted to start another company for my husband and I to start a solo 401k. You explained that we couldn't do this because of a controlled group. Is there any way, any other way to start a solo 401k? Great question, Irene. It's not exactly on topic here for why to include your spouse in the solo 401k that you have, but I'll try to address it. Um, you're right that it sounds like uh, based on your ownership percentages, you may be part of a controlled group. Um, if that's the case, then you're not allowed, ba again, based on your ownership percentages, and this is something we would recommend you talk to your CPA about, you can't just spin up another company like an LLC or a small partnership and then have a solo 401k for that company. And guys, we have to remember these rules are not really written for normal people like us. They're written for gigantic corporations. So what the IRS wants to avoid is not someone like you, Irene, who has 17 employees. What they want to avoid is the guy that has 17,000 employees. They don't want him to just spin up an LLC and be able to stash 50 grand into that solo 401k every year without offering an employee benefits plan to his company that has 17,000 employees. So the answer here is um, it, it really depends. It depends on a number of factors, what your ownership percentage, what you and your husband's combined ownership percentage is of this business that has um, the 17 employees. And we would recommend that you speak with your CPA or tax advisor to see if there is a solution available for you. So we are coming to the end of our time here, guys. Um, go ahead and type in any other questions that you might have. I hope that this information is helpful. And oh, if you were one of the people that responded to the poll and said, my spouse does not participate in the solo 401k, but I want them to, then it's really easy. Just send us an email at support at solo401k.com and we will make sure that your spouse is included as a participant in your solo 401k plan. So um, I don't see any other questions popping up. It was so awesome to have everyone with us. I hope that these webinars have been helpful for you. Couple of reminders for you. If you have not yet joined the, uh, oh, Yun Hee says, what was the ad website address to get a list of CPAs literate in the solo 401k? Go to your solo 401k dashboard and click on support in the upper right hand corner that will take you to our knowledge base and that way you can access the CPA resources list. We do keep that updated. We actually just updated it this past month where we always go through, we call the CPAs, we make sure they're still taking on new clients. If they aren't, we take them off the list. We find new CPAs so that you guys have some resources that are available to you. Um, so two reminders for you. Number one is to um, join the Solo 401k network. Come hang out with us there. We'd love to hear your thoughts about what you're investing in. What are you seeing in the state of the economy? What's going on in um, our world right now? Share your thoughts. Join the conversation. You can join the network at solo401k.net. And then next Wednesday, we have a really cool webinar that we're doing with uh, the CEO and founder of Farm Together. 
they have a way for you to be able to invest retirement funds in farmland. It's a very interesting platform, especially now when we're seeing the population growing and how valuable food production is becoming. So we'll be digging into that next week. It was wonderful to have you all here with us. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and talk to you soon, everyone.